OpenAI's press releases are weird. Like you have to like read through them and because of how they do their rollouts, which if anyone's wondering and using GPT and trying to figure out like, yo, where's the new features? Literally save yourself the time because I've done some digging myself. Um, the rollouts are random. Of course, they probably have some type of insiders or something like that, that they prioritize who gets it first, but their rollouts um, like for instance, on the iPhone app for GPT, I literally closed it and reopened it, uh, you know, the other week and got new updates with like completely new features, like the audio back and forth talking. So realistically, they're rolling out all the updates on the back end. Um, I guess I haven't really looked at it hard, but I guess the way that they made the GPT app, at least for iPhone, is purely just a bunch of front end APIs calling their back end server side, which obviously does for the chat side, but I'm thinking it does for their features too. So they don't even have to push an update to the app to the app store. They just put an update on the back end with their APIs and the front end will display it. And it looks like the way they're rolling out their updates are completely random um, from what I've seen, uh, which basically, you know, just randomly you wake up and refresh the page or be in the middle of working and boom, there's a new OpenAI ChatGPT feature. They did get like 100 million users in their first year. So I think they've got quite a bit of people to please. Anyway, back to the dev day and kind of what my opinion was. Um, or kind of what I'm taking it as. They've got the GPT-4 Turbo, um, 128K Consex. Basically what this is, and from my understanding also um, on testing, is basically GPT-4A works way faster now, which I do know that. I've tested that. Um, and also the amount of memory or text that you can uh, give it um, is considerably longer. Uh, so, I mean, I think I read an article the other day, someone put in like 20,000 words or something. So I don't know the exact limitations, but basically you've got way more memory capabilities as well as it's moving way faster um, on this new GPT-4 update. Is that a good thing? Uh, yeah. And quite frankly, to an avid GPT user, you will definitely notice this. Um, I, you know, I've got long threads, long conversations of certain projects I'm working on utilizing GPT-4, and I've already noticed the improvement. For a casual user, this is no big deal. The next feature that uh, they're talking about is the new assistance API um, that makes it easier for developers to build their own assistive AI apps um, that make or that have goals and can call models and tools. That's their exact verbiage. Basically, and again, that's what I'm saying, their, uh, their press releases are funny because they're missing all types of stuff on them. But from my understanding, my research and looking at the APIs, basically what it's looking like is a, actually, let me let me cut it back because I'm trying to I'm skipping a big part. The big part everyone's talking about here uh, for this new rollout is the GPTs. It's basically like um, a new app store that they're developing where there's pre-built chatbots inside of ChatGPT. I'm calling them chatbots for layman terms, but basically pre-built. Uh, GPT functionality. So instead of you having to start from scratch and teach the and all in one thread and then, then forget something or you don't cover and you gotta go in sequence, you can build out your entire model right there with the instructions, with all the details, all the information you need to program with it, including PDF documents and all this information then save it as your own GPT um, and even put a little icon on what it is. Let's say this is my uh, vitamin bot um, or whatever. And essentially that is now a widget that you can create new chats specifically with that GPT. Um, and so what does that have to do back to the bullet point I was reading with the assistant? A, uh, 
the assistant api is essentially that is allowing those gpts to also be pre-programmed built completely and then plugged into an api dev tool that now you can use that pre-built model for the api calls with whatever software you're building that one by itself the gpts is the biggest like uh crazy game changer out of all of this according to uh you know the masses but um having that assistance api is a big deal and this is the deal that to me was extremely exciting and done saying this press release i think it says it in another one now they are allowing fully gpt4 turbo with the vision through the apis and I know that I totally just sound like a nerd saying that, but what does that mean? That means ChatGPT Vision, if you've already used it, everybody has for the most part, or people have, um, actually Rob is who told me about it first, is you can take a picture of something and send it to GPT and it can see exactly what you took a picture of and, and discuss it. Anything from a piece of artwork to a photo of what you're looking at to uh, diagrams that you wrote on uh, a whiteboard. First of all, that by itself was awesome, but why is adding that to the GPT-4 Turbo and the API such a big deal? Because now, realistically, like for instance with Tree, which we may or may not do this exactly, but for Tree, we can literally use the GPT-4 vision as our freaking algorithm. Well now, you don't really need to depend on um, tags and hashtags and some image recognition to program your algorithm so that it's feeding the best video, audio, image, or whatever to a um, perspective uh, user. Now, we could technically plug into the GPT-4 vision, maybe crazy expensive with the amount of API calls at this stage, but the concept of where we're moving is what's game changer because with that vision api now we could basically plug that in for instance on tree and every single piece of content that is not only being uploaded but then consumed in the news feed is actually already been translated into specifically whatever language we write out and so now we're really learning what the user is doing 24 7 um as far as the kind of con 24 7 that now it sounds like i'm zuckerberg we know what they're doing all the time but no i mean um you can know what content they're looking at no matter what content and and whether they like it and be able to predict more and more and more similar content and more and more accuracy because you let ai see the content for you now lastly the module um basically they're saying new multi-model capabilities basically what they're talking about is like dolly 3 text to speech um bing or browsing or whatever the hell um all mixed in one now basically gpt4 can do everything without you having to switch models cool expected it's kind of annoying having to switch anyway now lastly the module um Basically, they're saying new multi-model capabilities. Basically, what they're talking about is like Dolly 3, text-to-speech, um, Bing or browsing or whatever the hell, um, all mixed in one. Now, basically, GPT-4 can do everything without you having to switch models. Cool. Expected. It's kind of annoying having to switch anyway. And then, of course, the big thing everyone's talking about is that GPT store. Um, which, you know, they're comparing to being the new app store. I could say possibly. Peace, baby. You drink.